Hey you guys, it is me, Laura. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, ages four, nine, and 11. And today I am finally getting to you guys the much requested Pinwheels walkthrough and review. Pinwheels is a language arts curriculum from Rooted in Language, has year one, which is level one and two, and year two, which is levels three and four. And this is an early literacy learning to read program that is specifically written for children who struggle with things like dysgraphia, dyslexia, any language related challenges. That is who this program was written for. Rooted in Language is a team of really awesome women who are speech and language pathologists. They've done a lot of tutoring and a lot of work with students and especially homeschool students. And that is what has prompted them to write this curriculum. If you go to the Rooted in Language website, you will see they have tons of resources, not just for the little ones. They have, um, after you finish Pinwheels, they have a program called The Wand. And then after that, they have a bunch of courses that you can take as an educator um, to learn how to apply these strategies and skills as you continue on in your language arts journey with your children. Now, I am someone who has used, we're halfway through, Pinwheels level three with one of my kids. I am I'm a few units into Pinwheels one with another one of my children and I have taken a ton of their courses online and I've also done some one-on-one -on -one coaching with them. Overall, I have been greatly helped by and learned a whole lot from these ladies, but I am going to go ahead and show you what Pinwheels is like, let you know what to expect, and at the end I will give you a little bit of a review of how things have worked for us. One thing to keep in mind is that Pinwheels is currently only offered as a PDF. So you will either need to print all of the materials or you can have them printed. There's also a company that they work with and I don't remember what it is, but I'll try and find it with the link below where you can get the letter tiles that match with the program that are wooden tiles that you can use or the PDFs come with a download so that you can make your own letter tiles to use for the program. You will get all of these files and folders when you get your level of pinwheels. Pinwheels is set up so that year one, which is meant to be kindergarten or first grade year, is going to be um, pinwheels one and pinwheels two, and year two is pinwheels three and four, and that's supposed to be really about a first grade level. They have not released pinwheels four yet. They're hoping to have it out for the upcoming school year, so right now, you can just buy Pinwheels 3 separately. For Pinwheels 3, I have the educator guide printed out as well as the reading kit. And then for right now, I put went ahead and put the student workbook in with the reading kit because we're halfway through and I could fit them in one binder and I was trying to save space, but you'll need separate binders for each one. And there are instructions about how to print all of this, what size binders you'll need, everything that you're going to need. There is a lot of prep up front. So if you're going to use this program, I recommend getting it over the summer, giving yourself time to read it, giving yourself time to print all the things and prep all the things because there's a lot of prep to do. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what is in the educator guide. They recommend keeping a pouch in the front that's going to have all of the cards and the resources and the activities that you're going to need to complete the lessons. That way they're easy access and you can kind of rotate out what you need so that you're not having to jump up and get it. Now, I will say that there are a lot of moving parts to this. There are whiteboards, there are tiles, there are lots of paper things for you to cut out, lots of different things to keep track of. For me, this is very challenging. I struggle with keeping track of a lot of moving parts and a lot of things. But for some kids, that's extremely helpful. And it does help to certainly have everything in um, as much of it as you can fit in one of these pouches as possible. As you can see, they've got everything broken down into units. And each unit is going to take a different amount of time depending on your child, but they're intended to be about a week's worth, give or take. Some are a little less, some are a little more, but you're definitely meant to go at your child rate during all of this. One thing that um, Rooted in Language is very strong on is educating you as the parent to help you know why you're teaching these things, how to teach these things, what the purpose of them is, all of the um, science behind everything. And so that's really helpful. So when you open this up, you're going to have some abbreviations in symbols, some things that you're going to need to do before each unit. And this is how I do it. I tend to, once I had everything printed and set up overall, I tend to prep unit by unit. So I'll read the unit. 
gather and prepare all the materials listed, familiarize yourself with the educator script in the yellow boxes and decide the appropriate length for each lesson, adjusting the unit as needed. And it's also got a list of general supplies that you're going to need. One thing that you'll notice throughout is these um, video candemonium. So when you get your um, PDFs, you're gonna have a link as well as a password to access these videos. And all of these videos show you how to do the different things. They show you how to do the activities. They're in-depth explanations really of how everything works. The pro side is that it's really great to have that extra reinforcement and to be able to see how something is done but it does take time and so you're going to want to make sure that you watch those before each unit so that you know kind of what is coming up and in i don't know if it's included in this one and i just didn't print it but there's a lot of information that explains the what and the how and the why behind all of this the brain science all of that and i highly recommend reading that when you come to each unit you're going to have a plan so this is just kind of a suggested way that you can go through the activities. I honestly don't use these very much, but it just shows you kind of what to expect for each day and what skills you're going to be targeting on that day. Then at the beginning of the unit, you'll have the supplies that you need, why you're teaching what's in this unit, as well as any information that you're gonna to need to know about teaching this particular unit. And a lot of these are strategies that they're focusing on. So you've got more to read here as well. Each day is separated one day at a time. And this is going to tell you your vowel chart activity. So you're gonna read all of this, watch the videos ahead of time, all of that stuff you're gonna do ahead of time. And it kind of tells you what to do for your vowel chart. And you're gonna do a short vowel review from your work. You're gonna do a world word building activity where you're gonna do your workbook pages for sound blending, spelling practice, and some letter tiles. And then these are some things that you're reviewing that they have learned in previous lessons. So you're just making sure that your child already knows them. If you're jumping in at Pinwheels 3, you'll be building them for the first time. Anytime you see these yellow box, boxes, this is scripted. So you can read this exactly as is to your child or if you want to just read it ahead and say your own words, you can as well. And then you go on to day two, where you're gonna learn a smack dab spelling rule and do an activity with that. There's the yellow box with, and then a blending activity that you're gonna do from your workbook. And this get, gives you some teaching that you're gonna do ahead. Often you'll do teaching ahead with tiles and whiteboard. Um, sometimes you have other activities and games that you use as well. And then here's some more activities that you're going to have. They always have words that you're going to use. And I'm sorry the camera keeps moving around. I'm having issues with my tripod. So I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. So then here's some more word lists. They typically have things in a couple different levels so that you can pick the level that's appropriate for your child. And then here's another word list activity that you're going to be doing. Um, where you're going to be marking the, the rule that you're focusing on in the word. And then there's day three, where you're going to have some spelling practice, and some more activities. And then um, you're going to be working on some sentences where you're going to be marking the text. And here's another activity. Day four, you're going to be working on the final VE and doing some words that have that. And here's a lot of information for you as, as, a, as a parent before you, you do this activity with your child, things to keep in mind, ways that you should be doing it and things that you should avoid, all of that kind of stuff. And you're gonna be working on invented spelling and writing sentences. And there's some challenge sentences you're gonna be working with. Day five, you're gonna be making this page. All throughout, you're gonna be making pages that um, show the rules that you're learning to keep in your language arts binder so your child can reference that and go back and look at it and see. And then here at the end of each lesson, it tells you what you should have for your LA binder and where it needs to go. And then the units will continue on in this fashion. When you get to the end, it includes things like talking about a plot arc and a story. Okay, so this one has seven days in it. So you can see they're all different. And so then at the end of the unit, it will tell you these are the things that you need to have in your LA binder and where to put them. 
your LA binder is going to be put together with various sections and it walks you through all of that in the resources. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the workbook so you can see what some of the pages are. So this is unit 10, this is about halfway through. Um, anytime a child's learning a new sound, they're gonna have a page to color and decorate to put into their notebook. And there's a lot of emphasis on saying the sounds as you write. So in this case, you would say or, 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 and building those neural pathways to help the kids remember the sounds better and to make things stick, to make reading easier. So you're gonna see a lot of that. And so in this case, you're gonna be using the letter tiles and you're gonna practice blending with, with or. So you might put for or gore, or you might do orb ort, org, and have them write some of those that they build on the lines. And here they're going to highlight the or in each word, and then they're going to show, they're going to separate them out where they go. They're going to read the question and write an answer, and it walks through all of the, all of the steps and everything in the teacher guide or in the instructions it'll tell you exactly what to do in this case they've got what's called common and caution words these are words that may not be spelled the way that we think they do or they're words that we see a whole lot that we haven't learned the rules for yet or various other things and they put extra practice for those and there's cards so that you can play some games with those as well so they're going to do some work on that and this is going to be an activity where they're marking these words based on skills that they're using and there's more of that there and then here is going to be even some more practice that's going to incorporate their new things that they've learned as well as some older things that they're reviewing and the units are all going to look a little bit different but there's a lot of similar style worksheets in in here in the reading kit you're going to find word lists that you use for various activities as well as just extra practice there's going to be sentence strips as well for the same idea those are kind of included there's also some extra practice there's going to be paragraphs that you can do some extra practice with sometimes there's activities that go along with this in the program other times these are just extra for you if you need more practice and this is also where you're going to have your readers that you cut out and assemble and each reader is going to be read three times there's um, reinforcement for your child if you would like to use it where they can build there's all sorts of different ones my child is using the castle um there's i think a caterpillar maybe i don't remember all the ways that you can keep track of the books that your child reads but there's lots of celebration built in so you're gonna print off that book and you've got copy work pages to go along with it as well as instructions on how to use the copy work um and then there's always activities that you retell the story. Sometimes you're going to be doing these with your um, story plot arc that you've created and sometimes you'll be doing them other ways but there's lots of creative ways that you retell the story and then um, there's going to be more of the same and there's usually I have found a story every other unit and then the other units you're working on other skills more. So that's kind of how I have found it to be set up. There's also an appendix that you're going to have and I just print the stuff from the appendix as I need it. I don't, I didn't print it all ahead. Just now the question is what, what are my thoughts? What have I thought of pinwheels? And um, as you have heard me say, lots of moving parts is very overwhelming for me personally and it is challenging. It is not for everybody. Um, I also find that the moving parts for both of my children in different ways have been overwhelming. For one of them, um, when I've used some of these strategies and skills, it has been overwhelming um, just tiles, moving things around, keeping track of all of it is very overwhelming and gets in the way of the learning. Um, and for another one, likes to know what to expect. And so coming to each lesson every day, um, not having any idea what to expect and things being totally different and some days being really short and some days being longer and not having any kind of consistency in the lessons. Like you practice some of the same skills, but you never know when they're going to be. That's really challenging for him. So that has been a bit, <laughs> a bit of a challenge and it is a lot of work to prep and prepare. Now, some people can do it. I think that this stuff just for me and my personality I like to have a very, very basic, like this is the basic lesson that you need to do and it's really simple. And then here's all these other resources that you can pick from to add on if you need the extra work. Um, 
and then going through it that way rather than just having everything all there at once and just being so much to kind of work through is a little bit difficult for me. Um, now, as far as comparing this program to All About Reading or um, Logic of English, because I've used both of those, um, I would say that as far as alphabet building, like the very, very foundations, the, the very beginning parts of blending sounds and knowing sounds, this is, seems to be a really good program as well as Logic of English. Logic of English A and B is really good. We struggled with C and D. It didn't, there was not what we needed in the program and it started falling short for us. And I feel like this is a similar kind of setup in that year one seems to be strong and solid and helpful. Um, and it could be the ages that I'm working with here and when I'm tackling this and how I'm coming about it. But I find that once they get to that next level, for my kids in particular, they don't see themselves as readers yet. They don't see themselves as reading because they're reading these little readers that go along with it and they can't, this was a problem with All About Reading as well. They can't see themselves reading actual books because there's so much in there they don't know and they're taught so strongly that decoding needs to happen. And so it's a little bit of a stressor. So we're actually stepping back for one of my kids. Um, from pinwheels and we're going to be trying something different but I'm going to be pulling a lot of resources and a lot of strategies and a lot of techniques that I've learned from using this program into what I'm doing next. I feel like especially if you have a child who struggles this is for sure worth a try because even if the program doesn't work for you, you as a parent are going to know a whole lot more and you are going to be a lot more prepared to work with your struggling child. And to me, that is totally, totally worth it. And I feel like of the programs that I have used between Logic of English, All About Reading, and Pinwheels, I think this one is probably my favorite. They all have their strengths. So you do have All About Reading, which, and All About Learning Press, which they take the perspective of you teach reading separate from spelling separate from handwriting and I think for my children there needed to be more integration however I feel like with pinwheels there's a little bit too much integration and it's overwhelming um, and I feel like with logic of English it just moved too quickly and there wasn't enough so there's you know it's kind of what what do you do what do you do I hope that this walkthrough was helpful for you I would say that the pros of this program are that it is extremely thorough you will know a lot more as an educator and be better prepared to help your student. Um, there's a lot of games, a lot of hands-on. If you have a child who needs things to be different and changed up and gets bored really easily, this will be a big help from them. for them. There's more than you could possibly use as far as resources to help you. And the, the Facebook group, the ladies there, they're so helpful. So if you run into any snags or any problems, they are, I mean, it's just such a great place for support and it's just really, really, really good in that way. Um, if you have a fast learner or if you are someone who just does not have time to prep or prepare, I would not recommend this because there is a lot, there's a big learning curve and there's a lot to prep and a lot to prepare. Um, I think that when you have a struggling child, your time with that child, you're gonna be spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with them, but this also requires some extra prep time. And so you've gotta keep that in mind as well. So I think that is pretty much it. Um, overall, I've been happy with the program. It's not a unicorn. I don't know that a language arts unicorn exists, but I think for some children, this is exactly what they need. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. I feel like I'll do a lot better at answering questions than presenting things in this particular video. So I'm happy to answer your questions and I definitely recommend checking them out. If you have older students, um, definitely look into the wand or some of their other classes. And if you're kind of happy with your language arts program, but you feel like you need support, for sure, go to their website, check out their training classes and see some of what they have and it might be helpful for you. Again, be sure to check out Sarah's walkthrough. Hers is so much better than mine and we'll answer some questions and you can see a little bit of level one and level two. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.